everybody, Lauren Eibach here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to use my Procreate grids. I do a lot of lettering on the iPad Pro, and I absolutely love working in Procreate, but one of my biggest pet peeves is that there isn't a great guide or grid system. I've seen people using different brushes that create a grid, but it doesn't have any ruler markings and it's not even exactly centered on the canvas in Procreate, so you really have to do a lot of guessing. And I couldn't do that in the kind of work that I was doing because I get a lot of custom requests where people want things to look a specific way or be a specific size, so I would have to create the lettering in Procreate and then upload it to my computer and then do all the sizing and everything in Adobe Illustrator. And that was just getting to be really annoying <laughs> to have to be in two different programs at one time where I'm like, I could do this all in Procreate if I just had a good grid system. So one day I sat down and I made a ton of grids. Actually, I made five grids, but it was a lot of work. <laughs> I made five grids and five common paper sizes that upload perfectly to each of my canvases for these different sizes. So then I now have grids that have center markings and are also divided up into as little as eighth inch squares. So you can get really exact in where you drag things and pull things and you can also see exact measurements um, with rulers marked on the side. So I'm really excited to show you these grids. I hope that they'll be helpful to you in your lettering as well and that I'm not the only one who worries about this problem. So let's get to work. All right, so as you can see, I have Procreate open and I'm gonna pull up my canvas. So I'm gonna do the five by five to start. And it's very important that you have each of my canvases set to these pixel ratios and I've included those in the listings both on Creative Market and Etsy. So just look up those and make sure that you have them set by creating a custom size down here. And then your grids will always upload perfectly to your canvas and I'll show you that right now. So we've got our five by five canvas, go up to the tool, insert photo, and I've created an album where I've saved my grids and I suggest you do the same too if you are planning on downloading these grids as well. That way your grids always stay in the same spot. And I've got my five grids, five by five, five by seven, eight by 10, eight and a half by 11, and 11 by 14. So we're gonna pull up the five by five. And as you can see, it uploaded perfectly to the canvas. And you can also see I've got center lines right here that are a little bit darker. And then the lighter lines are showing you the inches and the lighter we go, the more exact we get here. I've got a little mark on the screen, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Okay. And then you can also see that I have each inch marked as well. So that's very helpful. I'm gonna show you that you can also add a different color to the background and you can still see the grid on top. If you don't like black on, on top of the pink, you can also change the brightness to white so your grid's all white or you can change the, it all the way to black, whatever you prefer. But I like to have a little bit of variation because I generally work on a white canvas. But all right, so we just uploaded our grid and it's very important that you do this next step. Add a new layer before you start lettering because too many times I've started lettering on the grid directly and then I go to get rid of the grid at the end and I can't because it's on the same layer. So make sure you're gonna letter on a different layer. I'm gonna change the color back to black. I'm gonna pick out my favorite brush, which is my flat brush pen that you can also find in my essential brush pack that's on Etsy and Creative Market. And let's see, is that a good size? Mm, let me just take it down a little bit. So I'm gonna write a word and you'll see how the guides really help me keep things nice and straight. And then I'll show you how I center it all on the canvas. So even though I like to have 
a little bit of bounce to my letters. Having the grid lines are, are gonna keep me from drifting too far up or too far down the page. All right, so, beauty. So as you can see, it's a little far up and a little too far to the left, but that's okay because we are on our second layer. We can just drag this over and I kind of use a combination of these center dots to line up to the center line or whatever line I want to line my design up to. And I also use these dotted lines because as you can see, when you move the design around, these little dots disappear. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So we've got this lined up center this way, but not this way. So I'm going to switch to magnetic so we can keep it in the same spot. And then looks like we're pretty centered right there. So we get rid of the grid and you can see that's perfectly center. But because ascenders generally go higher for me than my descenders, or if there aren't any descenders, your lettering is going to look like it's a little further down the page. So I like to move it up an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So I know that because each of these little squares is an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to show you that right now, actually. We've got our inch marks, a slightly darker gray that are our quarter inches and then even lighter gray that are our eighth inches. So I'm gonna just move it up a little bit. I'm usually not super exact and picky about it, but I just know that that's generally, that generally works out for me, an eighth of an inch or a little bit more. So that looks a lot better to me. And as you can see, it looks great. And you could save this and print it just as is on a five by five piece of paper. So I'm going to switch to a new canvas. We're going to do 8 by 10 and I'm just going to kind of show you the same thing. So we go to tools, insert photo, we go to our grids, we've got, oh, the pencil as well. Okay, we got our 5 by 5, uh, 5 by 7 and our 8 by 10. We've got that uploaded and as you can see it has all the ruler markings on both sides. You can switch it this way too and it works great. Something also worth mentioning is if you are working in a canvas size that I haven't included in this pack, you can still use these grids. They're still very useful and I'm going to show you by uploading my 5x7 to my 8x10 canvas. So as you can see it doesn't line up perfectly. And what I do is I just line up the edges to like one of the corners and I just try to be as exact as I possibly can. Move it over just a little bit. And as you can see, we still have our center lines and really helpful grid and guide markings. But the one downside is now you don't know exact inches anymore because we've distorted the image. But Generally, that's not a big deal. So anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. I hope that was really helpful. If you have any other questions about these grids, please leave me a message. And I really hope that they help you out as much as they've helped me.